Okay guys, so I'm just hooking up the trailer today, the green monster, and i um, just going to show you that briefly. So this big spring here is actually a spring off the garage door, so we take it and I hook it up onto the track here, it's one of those quick clip thingies. And uh, what that does is it runs this cable all the way to the back, kind of dips down there, you can't see, but I'll show you this side. It runs down here all the way to the back, then down this pulley, down to that arm. So when I'm dumping it, the trailer goes up, and it pulls on the cable, opens my gate. And I dump it, drive ahead, and I let it down. And I haven't got quite the right angle, but when it comes down, it comes to like that, so i got to give it a trip and then send her down again. Works good. Saves uh, my lazy butt from getting off the tractor, you know, because this uh, trailer used to be like, uh, you can see the latching there, so this door would open up and fold around, and this door here would open up and fold around. That was okay, you know, but then you had to get off and you walk around here, and then you couldn't, uh, you couldn't dump right next to a pile there, because the, the trailer is so low that the door would swing and hit that pile, and then you couldn't get your doors open, and you couldn't dump it. I mean, you could take these doors off with these great big pins, but you know, I just sort of welded her, welded it here, I think, and then I put a bar down here, welded it shut, and I just got some of these great big hinges, and welded them on here and here, and then up around here, and then it just swings on that. Works good. I haven't had a problem with it yet, so this thing is just, you know, sitting here doing nothing now, but whatever. So, and then I rigged up this uh, opener thing here runs the cable all the way up so just basically the spring so uh, it gives it a bit of a bit of give when it goes up so it doesn't snap the cable or pull the cable too tight you know because you don't want one of them flying back in your face so yeah but it works pretty good this I gotta change a bit maybe but uh, there and then I put this jack on because it never it had a jack but it um, it was um, mounted right in where my hitch I put on here hitches on and this had like one of those great big huge receiver things that were welded on but uh, because I was using it with this um, draw bar here or the you know on the tractor when I pull forward the ball ball like that would pull and it would yank on uh, the bottom of that hitch and eventually just wreck that hitch so the thing just kept popping out so I'm like okay cut that off and cobble this up you know and it works actually pretty good it's pretty thick steel there so I've got a bit of a, a bend in her there but that's from going over you know when the tractor tips over in this way and, and the trailer doesn't tip yet because it hasn't got to that, that hump yet and it ends up bending that open a bit but you know I don't think it's going to go anymore so I don't take this on the road anyway so like uh, out in the highway but uh, yeah, let's uh, get a shot of the hydraulics on here. Now I'd switch this because this trailer originally came with like the electrics in the in the box with the batteries, and um, I don't know who designed it with this kind of a lift. You know, from this bottom point here to where it pushes on here, but the ram, like this is where the trailer's got to sit because of the length of that ram, because that's the only one I could get for that size. But um, that's what this metal piece is there. It holds it, gives it a bit of support, right? But normally this should sit right flat, right? Well, that was all good, but um, the ram actually sat down too far, so it would have to push forwards before it started to push up. And the one they had on there was just not enough power for it. So you could only fill this thing up to, uh, well, there's the wheel. You'd only fill it up to maybe about halfway, you know, so that leaves a lot of extra space. If you fill it up anymore, it just wouldn't lift it. You'd start lifting it and go, and that was it. So you get the shovel out and having to, you know, that was a pain in the nuts. So I thought, well, we'll fix that. But I'll show you the ram that came on it. It's probably going to be hard to see. The light's not so good here, but uh, that's the ram, anyways, that came on it. And it's pretty small, and it's only a uh, single acting, too, so that means. Uh, you only put pressure in the bottom and then it lifts up, but then the gravity pushed down with the weight of the trailer pushes it back out. But, um, I mean, this one, 
I'll go by the size of my hand, so so uh, that may not work. This one's like an inch and a half or two inch or something ram, not very big. And I think the other ones. Well, let's go look at it. Okay, so we're just raising it up. This ram, I forget what size it is, four inch bore, so, you know, that's quite a bit huger than uh, that other little guy that was on it. Even this is thicker too, right, the rod. But, um, this so apparently lifts like, uh, well, the wood splitter one I think was rated at um, 29,000 pounds of push at 3,000 PSI from the tractor, so that's a four inch, so that, that'll probably give you like, you know, 35 or so thousand pounds of push or something around there. Uh, I know Princess Auto's website does have the correct number, but I think it's around there. But, uh, you know, that's way more than I need for this. Like, I can load this thing right to the tits, you know, and just have it spilling out over the edges, and it's still <laughs> no problem. It actually starts to bend in the frame of the trailer here. It uh, should almost have another support somewhere, maybe, but I guess the hoses should run through that. But I mean, there's one guy there, but uh, it actually starts to fold in the middle, so you can tell how much, how much weight's in her then. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, my trailer anyhow. Works good now. There she goes. There we go, one load out.